Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom, the podcast where we dive into the microscopic secrets that keep our bodies humming. I'm Ethan Foster, your dry-humored guide to all things health and wellness. If you've ever wondered how a rare compound from a beautiful flowering shrub could be the next big thing in medical research, you've come to the right place. And I'm Alara Skye, the one who occasionally turns these secrets into comedic punchlines, though I'd like to think my wit is as sharp as a surgeon's scalpel. Don't worry, though. I won't be dissecting any actual patients here. I'm more into dissecting interesting facts. I appreciate the clarification. I'm sure our audience does, too. Our focus today is on something that sounds both exotic and strangely ordinary. Gardenias. You've heard of these flowers, maybe admired them in a bouquet or marveled at their sweet fragrance. But apparently they're more than just pretty plants. Yes, gardenias are a bit like that quiet neighbor who turns out to have a fascinating secret life. You find out they've been quietly researching cold fusion in their basement. In our case, the unassuming gardenia harbors a compound called genepin. It's not a secret agent, but it sounds like one. Genepin, agent of healing, could be the title of a Saturday morning cartoon. But in the real world, this compound has gotten attention for its potential benefits in addressing a rare genetic disorder called familial dysautonomia. Familial dysautonomia. That's a mouthful even before breakfast. Essentially, it's a disorder that compromises the peripheral nervous system. People living with it can have trouble with breathing, temperature regulation, all those automatic functions we take for granted. It's like having a rebellious nervous system that refuses to follow the standard operating manual. Precisely. So, as it turns out, Genepin, which originally entered the scientific spotlight as a potential blue dye, of all things, has now evolved into a multifaceted compound with therapeutic promise. Who knew that the quest for a brilliant hue in the 1980s would open the door to nerve repair research? And to think my entire wardrobe color crisis could have been solved by gardenias if I'd just known where to look. It's interesting, though. Scientists have been focusing on Genepin's cross-linking abilities. Sounds like we're bridging something invisible here. In fact, Genepin is said to affect the extracellular matrix, that supportive framework around cells. The extracellular matrix is like a city's infrastructure, the roads, the sidewalks, the supports that keep everything connected. If something can strengthen or organize that, it could help nerve cells function better. And in familial dysautonomia, nerve cells are in a state of distress from the start. The research indicates that Genepin restores nerve development, and helps curb neurodegeneration in both lab-grown neurons and animal models. That's pretty significant if you're dealing with a degenerative disease that hasn't had many good treatment options. It's almost like a construction worker that arrives to rebuild the scaffold around these nerve cells. By the way, I recall the study mentioning something about the actin cytoskeleton. You know, the internal framework that keeps a cell from collapsing like an overstressed Jenga tower. Perfect analogy. The actin cytoskeleton is what keeps cells in shape, quite literally. By reconfiguring how these filaments align and function, Genepin basically supports healthier nerve cells capable of regenerating their axons. And axons are the highways of communication in the nervous system. If those roads get repaired, signals can actually reach their destinations. So, familial dysautonomia patients might see a glimmer of hope here. If Genepin can encourage nerve cells to restore themselves, we could be looking at a new chapter in managing that condition. It's not just about patching symptoms, but aiming to address the root cellular dysfunction. This is the kind of news that triggers optimism, though guarded optimism, as scientists might say. Still, it's a step in a very promising direction. Now, since Genepin is on a roll, let's discuss its cameo in diabetic retinopathy, which is a leading cause of blindness among working age individuals. The condition's root cause is high blood sugar damaging the blood vessels in the retina. Anything that can protect those vessels is a big deal. I imagine the retina does not appreciate being bathed in excess sugar, much like my teeth don't appreciate an entire box of chocolates, though that might not stop me on a bad day. In any case, Diabetic retinopathy is partly fueled by these nasty things called advanced glycation end products, or AGEs. AGEs are the biochemical boogeymen that form when you combine high sugar with fats or proteins. They wreak havoc on cells. So, how does Genepin muscle into this picture? It appears Genepin has the capacity to neutralize or reduce these AGEs, thereby mitigating the destructive processes that lead to vision loss. Studies indicated that when Genepin was delivered directly into the eyes of diabetic mice, it helped shield the retina from glucose-induced damage. So, you're telling me that a compound once researched for making a nice shade of blue could also help prevent blindness in diabetics? Indeed, reality is stranger than fiction. Genepin also tackles inflammation, oxidative stress, and energy metabolism issues in the eye. It's like that multi-tool you keep in your kitchen drawer, useful for everything from opening bottles to unscrewing the back of your watch. Or prying open stubborn jam jars. As an added bonus, the research suggests Genepin can reduce that abnormal cell proliferation associated with diabetic retinopathy. That's significant because in advanced stages, blood vessels grow uncontrollably in the retina, leading to bleeding and potential blindness. Precisely. And you have to appreciate a compound that seems to know when to apply the brakes on overactive cells without shutting everything down entirely. 
The next plot twist for Genepin, neuroblastoma. This is one of the most common childhood cancers, which arises from immature nerve cells. Just when I thought Genepin's resume couldn't get more impressive, it's apparently also a candidate for suppressing these malignant cells. The studies show Genepin hinders neuroblastoma growth by inducing apoptosis, fancy word for cell suicide, and also by spurring autophagy, which is more like cellular housekeeping. Clean up the junk, toss out the defective parts, and hopefully shut down the tumor's plans for global domination. I like how the compound is basically telling the cancer cells, look, you've overstayed your welcome, time to pack it up. And in animal models, tumors in mice treated with genepin were noticeably smaller, all without the dreaded toxicity that you often see with conventional treatments. If that doesn't pique your curiosity, I don't know what will. This compound is hitting multiple targets, nerve repair, eye protection, cancer suppression. It's like the MVP in a sports league we didn't even know existed. And it underscores the broader idea that nature holds a treasure trove of therapeutic compounds. In this case, it's hidden in a sweet-scented plant many of us only know from gardens or bouquets. That leads us to the bigger picture. We're always talking about how small lifestyle adjustments can yield large health dividends. Now, we have a reason to talk about how a balanced, holistic approach might set the stage for these sorts of natural compounds to work their magic in our bodies. Imagine your body as a beautifully manicured garden. If the soil is nutrient-rich, the plants have a better shot at thriving. In the same vein, if our cells are nourished and less stressed, they're more receptive to beneficial compounds like genepin. So, that's where the classic advice to eat a wide variety of fresh foods, particularly bright fruits and vegetables, comes into play. Every color on your plate might hold a different set of phytochemicals. While most of us don't really consider how nature is teeming with biologically active molecules, the fact remains that many modern drugs originated from plants. Genepin is just another chapter in this ongoing story, showing us that a fragrance can also signal deeper healing potential. Still, the path to medical acceptance isn't simple. Research must continue, to be sure. But in the meantime, we can celebrate the possibilities. Even if you don't have familial dysautonomia or diabetic retinopathy, Genepin's story hints that the best health secrets are sometimes hidden in plain sight. And if you're anything like me, you'll be asking a horticulturist friend, hey, can I get a cutting of your gardenia bush? Not that I'd trust myself to cultivate the next medical breakthrough in my backyard, but it's fun to imagine. You could start an underground Genepin lab. I can see the headlines. Comedian accused of making healing compound in her shed. That would be quite the comedic scandal. My shed would absolutely become ground zero for suspicious brilliance. But jokes aside, the bigger lesson here is that a single compound can have multiple benefits when it's harnessed correctly. It's about synergy, how each molecular puzzle piece fits into the grand design of our bodies. One might ask, how do you harness something that's so multifaceted? And is it enough to pop a pill with genepin in it? We talk about synergy, but synergy with what? Synergy with a lifestyle that encourages cellular health, nutrient-dense diets, stress management, quality sleep, and maybe a bit of a mindful approach to daily living. Think of it like building a strong foundation. The body can handle so much more when its baseline is well-supported. So, in a sense, we're setting the stage for genepin to do its good work, if and when it's administered. Your body isn't an isolated set of organs. It's an interlinked tapestry. And if you make the tapestry stronger, the threads hold together better. It's fascinating how this one compound, plucked from a flower often admired only for its scent, can be so powerful. Sometimes solutions to complex health issues are literally growing in someone's garden. Let's also remember that gardenias have a long history in traditional medicine. Like in Eastern cultures, particularly in China, they've used the fruit for treating inflammation, sleep problems, mood disorders. And now here we are, centuries later, discovering even more advanced applications. It's a beautiful circle. Ancient healing wisdom meets cutting edge research. I love that dynamic. It reminds me that we can learn a lot from the past if we're willing to adapt our modern tools to dig deeper. As we approach the closing of this episode, I'm tempted to summarize Genepin in one line, from colorant to caretaker. That might be the succinct version of this entire discussion. Not a bad tagline, but let's add a dash of flourish. Genepin, coloring our understanding of cellular health and stepping up as a caretaker for nerves, vision, and even beyond. Sometimes I think we should start a t-shirt printing side business, because that line would sell. But until then, we'll keep handing out knowledge on cellular wisdom. Indeed we will. So to wrap this up, if you ever catch the intoxicating scent of a gardenia, consider that beneath its white petals and delightful perfume lies a compound that could revolutionize how we treat nerve disorders, protect our vision, and tackle certain cancers. And that's the kind of revelation that makes me look at my garden with newfound respect. Maybe my begonias are plotting their own scientific breakthroughs right now. With your gift for understatement, we'll soon have the entire neighborhood believing that each plant is a molecular goldmine. Hey, you never know. True. But we do know that Genepin research highlights the value of embracing natural compounds and holistic living. It's not about fixating on a single cure-all. It's about acknowledging that the body can heal better when given the right support. Exactly. 
And if that support includes a bit of comedic relief from your friendly co-hosts, well, that's just the cherry on top, or the gardenia bloom on the shrub, so to speak. Absolutely. Now, folks, that's all the time we have for this episode of Cellular Wisdom. We hope you've enjoyed this deep dive into Genepin and its intriguing possibilities. Remember, your body is like a lush garden. It thrives when nurtured with the right nutrients, insights, and a little humor along the way. And if you find yourself humming a tune about gardenias later today, we understand. Just make sure you don't jump into any secret cross-linking experiments without at least checking if your shed is up to code. Good advice. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Until next time, stay curious, stay healthy, and give a silent salute to the gardenia for harboring such extraordinary potential. We'll be back soon with another voyage into the microscopic wonders of your body's cells and the plants, compounds, and ideas that support them. I'm Alara Skye. And I'm Ethan Foster. Take care, and we'll chat again very soon. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.